And then over here, we just have Ditto in a wig. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another week in Nintendo Land. This is the podcast brought to you by Switch Player Magazine, where we talk about the latest news, releases, and rumors all in the world of Nintendo. And today, I am Nathan Ellensworth. I'm joined by my co-host, Anna Karasik, and we're also joined by our art director, Jonathan Canero. Hi, Hi guys. Hello there. Nice to Good have you to be back. back. It's nice to have you yeah. back, and it's nice to be back. I'm pretty sure this is our first podcast of 2021 officially. There have been attempts. Rest mm -hmm. in peace to our past attempts, but here we are because we have a lot to talk yeah. about. Exa exactly. For our three or four regular listeners who may be wondering what happened, basically, <laughs> just people moved houses and then like technical difficulties and all sorts of things went wrong, but we're aiming to be back. So. This is it. This is the start of another big run. But the problem is, it's because it took us so long to come back. Our last one was literally last year or maybe the end of December. There has been so much Nintendo news that we're going to have to kind of fly through a little bit of stuff. I'm going to need like quick <laughs> opinions and then move on unless it's something right. big. So, so you're um, saying what I'm hearing is I should spend 30 minutes arguing about Sword and Shield again, even though it has nothing to do with what we're talking <laughs> about. That's what I'm hearing. No. No Pokemon arguments, even though there is cause for maybe a couple of Pokemon arguments. We'll do that separately. We'll do that another day. I <laughs> Understood. I'm gonna. I, well, it's later on, but I'll fly past our Pokemon opinions. That I think me and you should do a video together another day, so we don't bog this down. Turn the but comments the off. <laughs> So, the main thing that has happened is that uh, good old Miyamoto or Shintaro Furukawa have blessed us finally with a big beast of a Nintendo Direct. After 500 and something days, the last one in September 2019, in February we actually got a Nintendo Direct. It was 50 minutes long, it was full of announcements, um, and it was met with mixed reviews, okay. as everything and anything Nintendo do is. Um, yeah. But still, it was wonderful to see that format come back, and we're going to quickly go through a lot of the biggest announcements. Not everything, we're not going to talk about Stubbs the Zombie, and other <laughs> things. We're going to go through the first party and the biggest things. So the first thing on that list was we got a smash reveal of Pyra and Mithra, which was pretty cool. Um, yeah, what, what did you guys think? Are you Smash fans? Are you Xenoblade fans? I actually got Smash, smash recently. I think since our last podcast, I got it. So nice. now I have it. I don't have the expansion, so I won't be getting it for a while. the new all these characters uh, announced. But um, I've heard it compared to sort of the Zelda Sheik transformation. Like, we get two characters in one. Um, I think it's really neat. Uh, I don't know Xenoblade. I don't really know much about the characters, but they seem, like, really fun to play with. I've been enjoying playing with characters that I know nothing about. There was... Okay, who was it? Someone from Castlevania in Smash. Um, mm -hmm. Who is it? Simon? Is that Richter? his name? S Simon and Richter. Right. So we're playing story mode, and I got to him, and I'm like, <coughs> guys, who's Simon? I you know and that's how I feel and that's how I feel about them like I'll be like who, who are they but they're but they're fun mm -hmm. they're cool they're fun and Simon's fun to play as I don't know who he is so I I'm in I'm in let's do it you're talking about Simon Belmont I can't believe you don't know who he is I don't Richter, know I'll forgive you because nobody's played Rondo of Blood how am I that, supposed that to know like if I've never played something. a Castlevania game how am I supposed to know uh, that literally oh. what other <laughs> means do I have to know this it's not Next time <laughs> Castlevania Collection is reduced to like three quid on the Switch eShop, you need to download it because they're very good games. Okay. What about you, John? Are you a Smash fan? I, I like Smash from a distance because I was not able to get it yet. But it's a game oh. that uh, when I had a chance to meet friends, it was always the game that I would play with them uh, on their Nintendo Switch. Yeah. Uh, but uh, when it comes to... The, Pyra and Mithra, and in fact, all announcements of Smash in general. Uh, that thing that Anna said about Richter is the greatest thing about Smash, because in the end, there are so many characters packed mm -hmm. into the, the game that even if you don't know the old characters or the or if you aren't fond of the new characters, there's something for you. If you are a friend of RPGs or fighting games, not, not game only or... that, it's not just there's something for you, but it it introduces you to franchises you never never would have looked twice at. 
Like, how many people would have even known what Mother or Kid Icarus was if it wasn't for Smash? 100%. Super Smash Bros. is responsible for the Fire Emblem popularity that we see now. That too? That's not an overstatement. (laughs) Like, it did. Uh, It it brought that franchise to us. No one would know F Zero. F- yeah. No F Zero. A lot, a lot fewer people would know Star Fox, but people would like care a lot less about it. I think yeah. because everyone yeah. knows Fox and Falco from Melee. Everyone just remembers. Yeah, them. as a fact, to show how that is true, when Pyra and Mithra was announced at Xenoblade Chronicles Two, uh, they sold all remaining copies in Japan or something like that. Yeah. To Doesn't see how me. important the franchise is to people to know new games and to uh, get curious about games they haven't been been able to play. And Pyro and Mithra, we we have seen the the announcement, and then we had last week a presentation by yes. Sakurai, and it was amazing as always because he is. An amazing presenter. He is funny, Such and like we always talk humor. about. Oh yes, God, it's him. always great to see him, and he has a knowledge about the franchises and the game itself. And Pyro and Mifra looks amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm. What about yeah, you, Nathan? That's... You're a Smash aficionado, right? I love my. I love me some Smash. I'm a big fan. I'm not very good at it, but I always play it. <laughs> Same. So like, not good. So I can. I like fighting games, and well, how much I get into them depends on how good I am at them. And I was quite good. I was quite good at melee, and I quite enjoy Dragon Ball Fighters and a couple of other ones. But Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, I haven't. I say that I've played it for over a hundred hours, so I must be doing something. But anyway, Pyro <laughs> Mithra. They released on March fifth, so that was obviously well after the presentation. Now um, I've played them for a few days. They are really fun. They're really quick. They're really powerful. And they've got a couple of downsides in terms of, like, they're quite easy to launch and stuff. Do you think they're, they're going to get adjusted? Oh, 100%. But the thing is, every time it, every time a character comes out, everyone's playing as them. So people go online and go, oh, I just lost against the new character. So it's kind yeah. of a chance to maybe balance a character that hasn't had, a, you know, um, that much play testing as when it's officially released. But also, everyone's playing as that character. I remember when everyone said Hero from Dragon Quest was busted, and then a while later everyone was like, Hero's not good. <laughs> <laughs> so it, you always have to give it a couple of months, let the scene adjust, let the next character come along, because we, we had this with Sephiroth as well. But I think Pyramithra's inclusion is really well done. The characters are really well realized in Smash. They look mm-hmm. incredible on those models. All the Xenoblade music is fantastic. Like, that music from the series is really... It's like exhilarating, it's right. pumping, you know, it's it's more rock focused as RPG music than something like your Persona or your Dragon Quest, which is a bit more orchestral. So it's kind of a bit more um, energetic, I think. And I really love mm-hmm. that about the series. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you one thing I do think is um, Smash is all about visibility and these things are carefully chosen. So ARMS was chosen because we're going to get ARMS too. There's no way we would have got Min Min if there's never going to be an ARMS too. Um, and I think Pyra Mithra, Sakurai said about them before Smash was even released, and he said they're not going to make this cut because they didn't happen in time. But I think they're being put in because we're going to get another Xenoblade soon. And obviously, Xenoblade 2 came out in 2017, um, and then there was Torna, and then there was Definitive Edition of the original one. So I think the time's about right for another Xenoblade. And I think now, with all of this discussion, it's the absolute best time. But anyway, we need to start moving through. That was a big chat about Pyramithra. They need to be a little bit quicker now. So next up, we have... Project Triangle Strategy, the new Square Enix RPG in the HD 2D trademark engine mm-hmm. that we saw used for Octopath Traveler. Right. Um, obviously, this one is a little bit more focused on strategy. It looks a little bit more like your tactics ogre, your you know your Final Fantasy tactics, or maybe even something a bit more Fire Emblem-esque. So, like Octopath, but more complicated. Um, well, have, I mean, I... have you played Octopath? Yeah, I may. I love Octopath. I love Octopath, I'm, I'm, and I think maybe like you might be understating a little bit the battle system of Octopath because it's not exactly. Well, your... that's involved. It's involved, yeah. but it's not quite at this level. But I just want to say for people that haven't played it, it's not like your typical like I'm, I'm just like a just throwing like spells at you indiscriminately mm. kind of RPG. It's like a very puzzly type of. Um, I don't want to get into it, but it's. It, I just want to state it's maybe a little understated, but absolutely, this one's a more involved, like you said. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's literally it's it's on a square based grid. Right. You move around, you move your characters, and the whole point of the triangle strategy is there are three warring um, nations. This, this reminds me of Fire Emblem Three Houses in so many ways. I don't know how they've got away <laughs> with this, um, but they've done the thing that Fire Emblem should have done and stayed as two D pixel art because Fire Emblem Awakening and um, what's the other one? Fates look way better than Three Houses, but that's besides the point. There was a demo released immediately afterwards, very similar to What's Path Traveller. So we've got a whole year and they've asked us to give our opinions, which I think is a really smart thing. And if you remember the original demo for Octopath, they changed so many things. And then they had this trailer a year later where they were like, here's the feedback we got, here's what we did. We sped up this, we made this simpler. And it's a really smart way to deal with these things. But has anyone played the Triangle Strategy demo yet? Not yet. Yes, I've played it and it is quite a long demo considering mm-hmm. this game is one year or more apart from us. And it is uh, a snippet from the mid section of the game. So it is hard to get much from the story side of the game because you get things um, on a point and they, as they are moving on. And then you need to catch, catch up of things and characters have their relationships and alliances and they are enemies and then you're just throwing to the middle of the war but even mm-hmm. then if it's hard to understand the narrative it is quite uh interesting to see how deep is the the combat because uh, what you do on the story segments there's these the weird name in the triangle strategies because there's three uh powers but there's also three ways to uh to develop each segment of the narrative so if you choose certain actions you will move uh a pointer which is hidden but by the way they have said that but it you move around between uh, a stance where you are more aggressive or you are more diplomatic and these will uh, alter if characters will join your alliance and or if you get new enemies and this kind of stuff mm-hmm. and this happens on the demo already if you play it uh two or three times taking different uh, uh dialogue options you will change and well a character can die on a battle or he can join you or he, he can treat uh, he can uh be a traitor and uh put you on a dangerous situation so it's cool to see these changes and the combat itself is incredible because you just like in a similar way to the octopath traveler where you can hold turns to attack twice or uh or this kind of tough stuff uh the skills of each character in project triangle strategy they also have a bar that you need to spend points you need to spend and you can accumulate these points by uh jumping your uh, turn skipping your turn sorry and then you can use a more powerful attack on the next turn so there's a lot of cool stuff to Mm. to do in the game from the demo a lot of the stuff you mentioned reminds me of three houses too speaking of that like the building relationships with them making decisions and you know Mm -hmm. having them join Mm. your party based on how you conduct yourself throughout the game Uh, and the game itself sort of i mean three houses to lesser extent hopefully this one i have a feeling this game is going to do a beautiful job of that because like you said being dropped into the middle of a story with no context and you don't care about the characters you don't know why you're doing any of this i can understand why it feels a little detached (laughs) but but everything you're telling me just excites me a lot because i literally i I mean this i'm and i'm not using this in the millennial way i mean literally (laughs) nothing about octopath traveler disappoints me i love that game it's it's an incredible it's a masterpiece Mm -hmm. um so the fact that they're putting the same sort of conscientiousness into this game that just seems even more fun combat wise i'm in let's go yeah let's go i can't wait to play the demo (laughs) so that is a 2022 release so we've got plenty of time and uh I mean, the game already looks really good as well, so I'm sure by the time it rolls around, that game's going to look absolutely incredible. And then the next announcement we had, well, the next announcement I want to talk about quickly on this one is Famicom Detective Club, which is a huge 
kind of series in Japan, but we've never had it localized in the West. And this is kind of one of the last bastions of Nintendo's Japan only first party series. Uh, so it's super interesting to see them finally go, all right, let, let, let's put it on Switch and yeah. in a, dis a discounted digital only thing in a way that reminds me of um, the Phoenix Wright releases over here. Um, I'm super intrigued by this. This series is like really critically acclaimed in Japan. Um, I don't know too much about it. It's It's got some uh, character work by Game Freak, and, or maybe not Game Freak, but maybe the design company for Game Freak. So a lot of the models looked quite Game Freaky as well. Um, yeah, I, I've heard it, just, it, it was originally written by the same uh, writer of the original Dragon Quest mm. before the Dragon Quest were made. So it, mm. it, it sounds amazing. And uh, we are on a point where visual novels can strive again on the Nintendo Switch because it is a platform that can have that thing where you will play in short bursts and it won't be tiresome to go through a, a deep narrative which stacks have and so on. Sounds really amazing, really exciting. Yeah, I think that um, lower price point is going to do it really well, and um, I look forward to it coming out. So finally, give that series a try. Uh, next up, we have the kind of smash hit of last summer. Four guys has been finally confirmed for Nintendo Switch. This was inevitable, um, but it's still super <laughs> yeah. cool to see it happen. Um, and especially as recently, we've had confirmation that Mediatonic, the company who um, make Fall Guys have been bought by Epic. So these are the people that make Fortnite that then bought and brought crossplay to games like Rocket League. So I think um, Fall Guys coming to Switch A is going to be a really good port if Rocket League and Fortnite are anything to go by because they both yeah. run perfectly. They're two of the best, very best ports on Switch, no matter what you say about those games. And then we're looking at something like cross progression or crossplay as well. So if anyone's been playing Fall Guys on their PlayStation like I have, I'm hoping I can carry over my progression and that sort of thing. Um, and I'm kind of hoping this game's user base not dropped off a cliff, but certainly took a big hit because it was a flavor of the month thing. And then I think yeah. maybe Among Us came along. And you yeah, know, we had a lot we had a we had a lot going on last it year. It was so a this flavor real... of the month thing, but I, I remember distinctly there being a lot of complaints about cheaters in this game in particular. I know Among Us had cheaters too, yeah. but I remember this game was plagued by yeah, a lot of, bots a lot of Steam and cheaters. Players were... And so cool. people just became like, I, everyone I talked to was like, oh, this game is basically unplayable now because mm. you never know when you're going to get halfway through and then someone just starts eating themselves to the goal every time. So Yeah, I, this is where I think the oversight of Epic is probably going to be a win-win for them. And it's probably going to make this game have the longevity that Rocket League and Fortnite are now seeing because of, you yes. know... Um, Right. They're going to start having, you know, they're, they're going to be able to put consistent events in. Like Rocket League has events all the time. Like they had Ghostbusters stuff for last Halloween. Fortnite is the Funko Pop <laughs> of video games now Absolutely. because it's just got everything in the world. They added Ant Man yesterday, and then the day before that, it was uh, Ryu and Chun Li. So I'm I'm really happy to see Four Guys come to Switch, and I'm really happy to see it come over this way. You can make complaints about Epic all you want, but they're very good at what they do in these games as a service, and I think I'm really happy to see Four Guys given the support because they're a tiny little company. So can't wait for that to come to Switch. Uh, next up, we have Meet Hopia. The 3DS game <laughs> is being brought over. It's being given a facelift and i'm guessing it's getting some additional content and it's being developed partially by grezzo who we know from link's awakening on the switch who we know from the 3ds ports of ocarina of time majora's mask and ever oasis this feels to me like a waste of grezzo's time but i am interested i'm I want to play this, well, but I want Grezzo to be doing other things. Is okay, that I was about to say, no, uh -huh. I was about to ask you why, but that's a good reason to say that. However, my devil's advocate comment would be, I think, uh, or like in one of our podcast episodes last year, um, we were talking about things we missed from the 3DS. I think we all agreed um, Mies are something we really miss mm. uh, that yeah. we wish we had on the Switch. And I think, you know, some game at least incorporating the joy of me's and being able to put like your Uncle Johnny in as like a game <laughs> character. Like we love yeah. that in Smash, right? 
um, being able to make a sword fighter that looks like yourself or like Naruto or whatever you want. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just remembering the kind of characters just, people just would make on the Jack Wii. Just having Jack Black, Will Smith. Right, exactly. <laughs> so it'd be like, here's uh, Samuel L. Jackson, my me brawler, <laughs> you know, or my Jedi fighter, you know. Um, so I think it's something people like because you can put your favorite people as your favorite characters. And that's something people, at least us, we asked for low key yeah um i don't know but i I see what you're saying there's better like more (laughs) epic things they could be doing with their with their resume also we don't know how big the team is so they could be doing more sure to me the best thing about metopia is the fact that it opens um at least more options uh, for other 3DS games to be ported to nin- the Nintendo Switch mm-hmm. because we are kind of on a point where there are not many other Wii U titles to be ported. So if you, we want to bring back older titles, I think that 3DS has a gigantic, an incredible uh, library to be explored. And it does. 100%. It does, and there's a lot of games that, just like with Wii U, ended up on on 3DS that deserved the console treatment. Yes, like Metroid: well, Sam's we... Return is kind oh. of. It was released on a point where the 3DS didn't have the the power or the impact uh, to make that game shine as much as it needed to. Because mm-hmm. if it was a Metroid, a 2D Metroid like that, released for the Switch. Now, for instance, right. it would blow up. People would we would go crazy because people are waiting for a Metroid for right. years at this point. Oh, God. I don't it know if Metopia is like that much of a. But I see where you're coming from on that too. What were you gonna say? It makes think? me laugh. The Nintendo Switch is the console with the most Metroidvanias and the least Metroids. <laughs> like <Yeah>. it is. <laughs> it's you so really funny had to, to do it like that. Nate. You really had to say it like that, Nathan, didn't you? You had to do it that hopefully dirty. Not for long. Hopefully not for long, but we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. No, you're right. So I. I'm excited by Metopia. I think if I'd given, yeah. you know, a gun to my head, I would have rather Kidika Surprising. Or if we were oh. going by this sort of, I'm with we're going you. by this sort of game, I would have rather Tomodachi Life. Oh. But this. Kidaker's uprising on Switch. Why'd you have to do me dirty like that? Nathan? <laughs> That's Sorry. the one. If I if I could have one. Why'd you 3DS have to do me dirty over, like that? I it's need the that. best game on 3DS. It's the best I need it more than I know. I like know. I know. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, when Sakurai is finally done with Super Smash Bros. Ultimate in 2025 or so, you know, when he's done Fighters Pass Four, yeah, and finally we get Waluigi. <laughs> Talk he's about go make another Kidakerus. That is a game that deserved <laughs> the console true. <laughs> yeah. So next up, we've got Mario Golf Super Rush. Yay. This is another sports game by Camelot, who did Mario Tennis Aces. That's the yep. name of that one for Switch as well. Um, obviously, these are kind of the stalwarts of the Mario sports games, but they are also the Golden Sun developers. So a lot of people had seen Camelot had had a three-year gap and were like, here we go, Golden Sun. <laughs> and nope. Mario exactly. Golf. Uh-huh. Mario Golf. But this looks great. This looks yeah. wonderful. They're adding yeah. the soup. The Super Rush mode, which lets people run around on the pitch and adds power-ups in a Mario mm-hmm. Kart-y sort of way. So it looks like they're adding kind of party elements to a golf game. And if you're playing Mario Golf, you don't want to play a real golf game anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So I say, yeah, make it crazy. There, it, do whatever you can that. to make a golf game fun. Like, yeah, <laughs> go was, off, Nintendo. Yeah, that was something <laughs> that actually uh, put me off from the Mario Tennis Aces because as incredible as that game is and as much as uh, Mario and crazy stuff that are put on that game, it is an incredible hard game for you to learn. There are so many depths yeah. in that, into that game that it becomes uh, a game that is hard to play in a party. Let right. me enjoy this game It makes game it less level. approachable you to be like, to let's just pick it up. Learn that. Right. It's basically a fighting game. Once you learn yeah. the way to react to things and stuff, like um, the the wonderful John Cartwright from Nintendo Life released a video today talking about um, Mario Tennis Aces. That's the one. The one <laughs> Nintendo yeah. Switch. And he said, like, I've put a hundred hours in, and this does feel like a fighting game. So it's it, yeah. But I'm I'm excited by Mario Golf. I'm excited by an RPG mode, which we haven't seen since like the Game Boy Advance versions. We already saw Wario looking decked out in an outfit. He looks so cool. 
And I think it's just a lovely summer release. We always kind of like these fluffy sort of games that Nintendo give us. And I am hoping it's kind of got a bit more depth than Mario Tennis Aces. Um, but we're, we're a few months out. We're yet to see what kind of what happens from that. And then... Um, oh, really, carry on, John. I'm sorry. It's just a, a mention. It, weirdly, it also has me on the story mode. Because yeah. that's a thing. <laughs> Yeah, they're really coming back with the Miis, which makes me think, like, Maybe why? Maybe something will come like, to use the Miis better, and I don't know. I, I wish the me... Mii... What was it called? The phone app that he discontinued after a year, because no one liked it. I don't know. It, it was the, the very first Nintendo phone app. You had Miis in, and you, um, you couldn't play games or anything, but it was kind of a social thing. Oh, God, what was it called? I have no idea. Anyway, it, it failed. But I think the idea of like a Nintendo phone app or some a social system that signs up to your Nintendo account, uses your Miis, and you can kind of cross progress would be so good. Make Tomodachi life on my phone and then let me use that me and other things. Like that would be a good way to spread <laughs> yeah. a Nintendo brand. But there we go. Um so yeah, next Hi, up, we actually had we we actually had Aiji Onuma <laughs> come in front of us. The in a Zelda t-shirt, as he, as he does, and he was like, I know you want me to speak about Breath of the Wild 2. Well, I'm not. Anyway, <laughs> so many people's hearts were broken. Oh, God. He said, he said he hopes to bring us more news this year, which to me says Breath of the Wild 2 isn't this year, which is... You know, maybe we'll see. Maybe it's still later on this year. I think even in our estimations last year, we were kind of hearing like, oh, spring for Breath Here's of the Wild 2. Here's what I want. Summer, yeah. maybe I want fall. them to take as long as they damn well please. Because <laughs> I don't want the fans yes. going, this is just Breath of the Wild. With a different show. This is just Breath of the Wild 1. They didn't change anything. Give them time. Don't ask them to exactly. rush. If you yeah. ask them to rush, they're Absolutely. just going to put it out to please you. And then you're going to buy it anyway because you're a Zelda fan. But you're going to complain because it's not good enough because they didn't take the time to make it perfect for you. Just, whew, I'm fine. Take till 2023, also, bitch. I don't care. These, these people are perfectionists. Like the I'll Tokyo wait. EAD team that's in charge of Zelda, they took two years to make a physics engine. Yeah. Who, who does that? Take notes, <laughs> Pokemon. Like, I want, I want like, them to take their time. So who knows what they're putting in Breath of the Wild 2. Take as long as you need. If But if you had to ask me, I think it's next year now. I yeah. think maybe it's next March. And mm -hmm. I don't care, that's fine. But what we did get was an announcement of... the. I love that every Zelda delay is met with a... But here's a HD port nowadays. I remember <laughs> when originally Breath of the it's Wild like, was It's like, here's coming, a lollipop. Like, Would you like Wind Waker HD? And I was like, I, okay. I will, but I'm not happy about this. Fine, <laughs> I'll have a Tootsie yeah. Roll. <laughs> so we got Skyward Sword HD to the surprise of nobody, which is um, really cool. But it was a little bit weird that it wasn't touched on that this is the 25th, um, no, 35th anniversary of Zelda, which was on the Sunday after the Direct. Um, Maybe they're trying so... not to take uh, the hype away from Mario Day, which is... Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I think that's what they're um, doing. Whenever it's Obviously, possibly today. Yeah, I'll be like... Not, Mar uh, wait, it's tomorrow. March no, 10th. I'm saying like as obviously... of posting, it might be today or yesterday. Oh, <laughs> this week, as be. of we're put, we're recording this on Tuesday. Yeah, and then obviously on March 31st, Nintendo is going to shoot Mario in the head. That's it. He's dead. Luigi takes over. Yep. I think that's the the hierarchy. So maybe yeah. that's oh, you mean Waluigi, that's... right? Waluigi. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> he's the one who shot him. <laughs> you won't put me in Smash. So I I'm excited for Skyward Sword HD. Let's let's get back to that. Yes. I am um, I love I love that game originally. It's ten years old now, which makes me want to crumble into I dust because I remember buying it in the special edition that came with the golden remote uh, got it behind me somewhere. I remember being um, next and... in line to buy it at Walmart on Black Friday and then they cut off the line when I was next saying, No more video games tonight and I was like, Please man, oh, I see no. I see it. It's the gold no. remote right there. <laughs> I'm gonna cry, I need to stop. Please continue. I would have <laughs> cried until they saw I, it to me. I did you cry pain. that night. I never did Black Friday again. <laughs> Rest oh in God. peace. That so, copy. <laughs> so Skyward Sword, it is... I don't want to say the black sheep of the 3D Zelda games, but the reception, obviously, on is. release, it was lauded. Everyone was like, it's amazing. And then over the years, this kind of attitude of, well, the controls are cumbersome. It's got small overworlds. It's got, you know, like... 
many criticisms, which I think yeah. some are valid. Um, I don't like the size of the, the overworld in that game. I think flying is dull and pointless. Um, and the controls, when they work great, but shouldn't be a nine times out of ten they work, it should be I press this button and it works. Right. So there's a little, you know, there's a couple of things that could have been tidied up. But I'm excited to see this game given a second chance, given a chance for motion controls to be perfected with the Joy Cons, and um, hopefully mm -hmm. they will be. But also, they've stripped out all of the motion controls for a button only version, which is music really? to my ears because Nintendo and accessibility recently yes. have been a no no. They have been bad. So, this is really good to see. I wonder how much that's going to be customizable. So, maybe if you can't physically do the, for the sword swings, but you want to use motion for arrows and stuff, maybe you can do these sorts of things, or maybe right. it's just going to be an, a, you know, an all or nothing. Right. So, we've seen for, for sword swings, if you don't want to use the motion control to slash, what you can now do is move the right analog stick and it will slash in that direction. Very similar to Astral Chain and Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, mm -hmm. um, which is a, a, both were control methods people have pointed to over the years and be like, hey, do this. So I'm super happy they've done this. And um, I don't know how much you guys have like gone back to play these games or are excited to play this one again. What do you think? Is, this, is it going to hold up a new eyes going to help people? New eyes, you know what I mean? A fresh lick of paint is going to help people remember this fondly. Well, uh, Personally, I have never played Skyward Sword before, so it w is one of those games that I am glad to have a second chance now because uh, it will be the chance I have to finally try these games and see what it's all about. And uh, I, I've, we have seen the internet reacting as the internet always reacts to that stuff and saying that it is a HD port, HD. Uh, port a remaster where they are doing nothing but then you look at the comparisons and then you need to remember that the original game was on the Wii which isn't even a HD console it had the 4080 uh, resolution mm -hmm. which was small for, for the modern uh, televisions we have today so uh, when you compare the games you can see clearly that they are doing lots of improvements mm -hmm. and Probably there will be improvements that we do not know about yet, like they did with the Wind Waker re-release, where they speed up the the the, sh the, the ship segment. Right. It was mm. faster, and then there there was less of a quest that would take so long on the original original game. And about what Nate said about the how Skyward Sword is the black ship of the 3D Zelda at the moment. Yeah. I have the impression that it is the black ship until people change its mind again and mm -hmm. choose another game to be the black ship because Wind Waker had that kind of aura around it before because all oh, it is, has an empty world full of water and nothing else and people would complain about the art style and we well, are having a similar stuff with with Skyward Sword. Yeah. And I'm not saying that it will is a perfect game. I don't know. And it seems to have its problems. But maybe the problems aren't as bad as thing people make them look like. Yeah, I mean, and this... Yeah. Oh, the one point I want to make on this uh, before I move on is, is sort of related to what you're saying there, is that people maybe look at it with a different lens also because of when it was released. It was in the twilight of the Wii's life cycle. It was when they were trying to push this Wii Motion Plus. And yeah. I personally, you know, it went through my head as a kid. I'm sure it went through people's heads, you know, who were older. Like, hey, you know, this is a little gimmicky. Um, they're just trying to pawn off their new controllers on us by getting this game where it's important to have the new controller. Um which is one thing I felt because I didn't have any Wii Motion Plus controllers. That's part of the reason I never ended up buying it was I was going to get it with the special controller bundle and then I didn't end up getting <laughs> it. And then I was like, well, now I'd have to buy a Wii Motion Plus and the game or whatever to really get the most mm -hmm. out of it or the little, you know, uh, attachment. Um, yeah. I never bought that because I was like, I have all the, like, there's no other Wii game that I wanted that required that. So You never this... played Wii Sports Resort? <laughs> no so this <laughs> well good. not on my Wii um, and that's the other thing my friends had Wii Motion Plus uh, but anyway the point is uh, 
just like with H Wind Waker HD, just like with all these HD things coming over, it's a chance for people who, for whatever reason, didn't get to play it originally to finally mm -hmm. get the experience. Mm -hmm. So whether you exactly. liked it or not, it's it's a net positive for and whether you like the changes or not, whether you think they changed enough or not, um, not you guys in particular, but just in general, I think mm -hmm. um, it's a net positive for Zelda because it it's more exposure for people who, when they played Breath of the Wild two or three years ago, were like, oh, I like, this is my first Zelda game. I want to play more Zelda games. Well, now they can, and they can play it without having to get old consoles or emulators or something. Like It's a net positive, I think. They don't need to reinvent yeah. the wheel for every HD remake. I will say, like, I'm excited for this. I'm a huge Zelda fan. I love Skyward Sword. And I think this is going to be the best version of a good game. Yeah. So I think we could probably it's probably going to improve. But what I do think is interesting is Nintendo have got themselves in this position where they can get away with these things because they have cut off their ways of selling older games. Mm -hmm. So if you have a Wii U... You can go and buy Skyward Sword. And if you have a Wii U, then that upscales um, Wii games to 1080p or 720p or something HD comparable. So they themselves, if that was available on Switch, would only be fighting with themselves. But by cutting that off, I'm then going, this is going to be 60 quid. I don't think that's a good thing. And I don't think Nintendo... <laughs> You know what I mean? I don't think they should be allowed to continue getting away with not selling us older games that we would happily buy to sell us a remake for 60 which is a different discussion altogether. Um, I'm still going to buy this because I love this game, <laughs> but I do wish that other people who are maybe coming into the Switch ecosystem and didn't buy Wii U had the option to just buy Skyward Sword because it doesn't feel right. You know, this is this is the Pikmin... Uh, the Pikmin 3 argument when that was delisted and it's also an argument we're going to get into later about the Pokemon remakes because I feel exactly the same way about this as if we had the older ones would we be looking at this new version and say it's worth the money but that's mm. you know we'll, we'll see when it comes out <laughs> yeah. um, too, too, I, too I soon think, to tell on that yeah there might be a lot of changes and I hope there is and I hope they have put the thought in like they did with Wind Waker you know maybe we don't have to fight Demise so many times the giant creepy foot monster maybe you know there's a lot of quests that they could change so I'm excited to kind of see what they do with that but we did end on a high note and a game that I'm hoping there's a lot less moaning about and that was <laughs> the surprise announcement of a post-apocalyptic look in the Splatoon 3 um, this was an absolute left field of one for me even if we were going to get something splatoon i didn't think we were going to get splatoon, splatoon 3, 2 I has gotten such great post support and then they mm -hmm. put a whole new game yeah. out which is going to move the entire loyal online community to a new game i know i know they literally yeah. have recently picked up the splat fests as well which i guess mm -hmm. in hindsight now was both to kind of help people through the pandemic last year but now it's also been like oh they were very smartly building up the splatoon community again with yeah. absolutely free content that doesn't cost anybody anything you know people have been dining out in splatoon for three four four oh god four years um <laughs> so <laughs> i think i think people have got their money's worth from splatoon um too totally. i definitely feel like i have and i bought the expansion so splatoon 3 now has been announced and it already looks to be introducing a lot of new things they've got a totally different environment we've got a new city which looks very very different from the very very neon tokyo based original games and then we have things like it looks like you can choose where you deploy there's an, um, mm -hmm. a bow and arrow and there looks to be kind of a bigger emphasis on maybe a story mode or something like that so i'm yeah. super intrigued it doesn't look like too much of a departure yet but this game is still a year away and this is the very first teaser trailer so I, i'm confident that they are just getting it out there to get the feelers out and kind of let us know like get excited and then we'll find out a lot more in a big blowout kind of later on this year so you guys splatoon fans how do you feel i love splatoon 2 and well, when Splatoon 2 was first released, Nintendo themselves, they said that the game would have uh, one year of support with new updates and new uh, weapons and new stuff and two years of Splatfest. But in the end, we got much more than that on both departments. 
the Splatfests were back for a while. We had new content and even a paid DLC, the Octo expansion. Very and good paid DLC. Yeah, it just stunningly good. And if Splatoon 2 was from any other company of the big companies, I would say that it would become one of these games as a service where it would have have seasons with paid seasons and paid cosmetics that we, you would always have to come back to but in the end we got all that free content from splatoon 2 we got one paid dlc which came with huge amount of content both single and multiplayer and then now we can have a new installment of probably the same kind of experience so when it comes to that thing when you think that probably Nintendo can split the commun community a little bit when people, some people won't do the jump to Splatoon 3 while others may be, maybe will join in for the first time because they haven't been able to play yet or something like that. Uh, it is still a very good thing that they are going all in with a new game, with new content and new amazing stuff. And the best thing, thing about the the setting and the new world, the new city of Splatoon 3, is that uh, from what we've seen, it was the community that created this kind of more post-apocalyptic environment. Because mm -hmm. the final fest, the final Splatfest, because it was not the final, but uh, the last thematic uh, Splatfest, was all about chaos versus order. Uh, they had a, a huge show where uh, the two main characters were split, and each one was one was from all, one of the sides, the chaos or order, and the chaos uh, headsets and uh, visuals is very similar to what we have now with the Splatoon 3 teaser. So mm -hmm. it's always amazing to see how the community is kind of driven the next game to a uh, any specific. Uh, side or situation because if the order would have won we, we would probably have a kind of futuristic looking settings with uh, more technological stuff and these kind of things mm. because I'm, I'm very excited to so see so you more. really think the way that the Splatfest ended was how the next game was influenced yes yeah. In yeah. really did it for the first game yeah is Platoon 1 did something but on a smaller... Uh, That's smaller awesome. I had no idea because I don't play those Sp games. Splatoon 1, the final Splatfest, let you choose between the two presenters, Callie and yeah. Marie. And the one that lost went missing in Splatoon 2, uh, whereas the other one became um, like one of the characters that you interact with. And you had to go and find the missing one. Um, so that was a direct influence from the final Splatfest. And then right. Nintendo said the same thing with this one. They were like, you will decide the future of Splatoon. Wow. And so Chaos Chaos won, and now we're looking at Splatoon 3 Chaos, um, <laughs> which is super interesting. And I, I, I love the fact that they've got wow. such a dedicated community um, because they're so good to them and because there is this kind right. of Right, I think they're dedicated because their people are listening. Mm. Yeah. So I'm, whatever, whatever form Splatoon 3 takes, I mean, look, uh, competitive Pokemon players have to buy a new game every year. I, I think... <laughs> And they have to pay for a load of other stuff as well. Yeah. So I think Splatoon, after four years, and it will be five by the time the game comes out, saying, here's the next one. And who knows what hardware we'll be playing on then. So maybe it'll look a lot better by the time it's released. Um, so I, I, you know, we've got a lot more to see of it. I'm very excited. And my main wish is that I can play Salmon Run whenever I want. I can just <laughs> log on and play yeah. Salmon Run because I'm sick of having an hour and wanting to play Splatoon 2 and Salmon Run isn't open. That's my wish, Nintendo. Please yeah. make it true. That's all I want. <laughs> so any other thoughts on the Nintendo Direct before we move on? Lovely, because we had another. Well, not a Direct, because that's Nintendo. This was a Pokemon Presents, because it was presented by the Pokemon Company. Right. So we got a load of new Pokemon information, as happens every single year. But this was kind of a biggie. This was for Pokemon's 25th anniversary. Mm -hmm. So we got this huge recap of 25 years of Pokemon, detailing every single game, every single accessory, every single piece of hardware, software, merchandise. And I that video was possibly 
too long because everyone was like, give me the games. But yeah. I got emotional. <laughs> Every, I a lot of people said that, up. yeah. It's very I welled up looking because I was looking at things like the Pokemon Mini, and I was looking at Pokemon Puzzle League and the Pokemon Trading Card Game on the Game Boy, and I was like, "Oh my god, I remember that! I was a young lad." It was like that scene in Ratatouille when he has the, you know, his, his, his life flashes, and he's like, "Oh!" His heart like grew three sizes that day. Yeah. Oh my god, and it's a series that I love dearly, and has meant a lot to me over the years. And it was really heartwarming to see Nintendo and. Pokemon kind of really take the time to go, hey, we know we've got this incredible thing and we've got an incredible fan base because, you know, this is literally the biggest media franchise in the world. No ifs or, no, or buts. Like, it, in terms of money, it is the biggest media franchise in the world. So it's kind of cool to see them show that amount of dedication and understanding of their fans because not everyone has to do that. Um, so then we moved on to a quick summary of Pokemon Snap, which is coming out at the end of April. We already know plenty about Pokemon Snap. We kind of saw a photo mode detailed, duh. Um, and then we kind of <laughs> we kind of saw some social features. Yeah, it looks great. We'll talk about that next month when it, we start getting you know uh, previews and stuff. And then we got some big announcements. So first up, Diamond and Pearl remix confirmed. We got brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Bad names, but they look good. Um, yeah. We've got remakes of the Sinnoh games. And this took people by surprise because not only are they made by a third party studio, so not Pokemon Company themselves, and they also adopt a chibi art style, right. which is kind of a 3D rendition of the original top down view, which is very similar in a way to the Link's Awakening remake we saw, and kind of a, I think they called it a faithful retelling, which it is. And also kind of makes a lot of sense these games i think would have lost a lot if they'd been too removed from that and all the other remakes so far kept their top-down perspective and kept a lot of the warmth of the original so i think if this had been shoved into the sword and shield engine people would have bitched even more than they already have yeah. right so, and, and it would have been half-assed to for lack of a better term yeah it would have yeah, been I'm like you said shoved in and not you know, made with love. This is, you know what, people are like, oh, it's not going to be too different. First of all, we don't know enough to say that. Mm -hmm. Second, mm -hmm. like, we literally know almost nothing about this except what it's going to look like. Um, I, they haven't highlighted probably the best stuff yet. Um, and even if it is a faithful, like, to where it's like Link's Awakening, they didn't really add that much. Um, mm -hmm. Like you said, it's made with love, clearly. the It's different enough to where they didn't just rip it from something. It's, it's completely re- um reimagined visually but with the same things you loved about it because we loved the designs of the pokemon we loved mm -hmm. the the way they looked we loved the the map style because it was so open and centralized we loved like a, and the dynamic nature of it like of of the map um and and this game was a turning point for the entire pokemon series so you really don't have to do much to it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That said, Heart Gold and Soul Silver and Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby are very transformative of the original games, like highly transformative. Um, and people have nothing but good things to say about those. Mm -hmm. um, Fire Red, Leaf Green even added the same And Fire items. Red, Leaf Green. I always forget mm -hmm. that when I mention these amazing remakes. Yeah. They, they completely redid them in the image of the new console. So the d playing devil's advocate with myself would be to say, at a first glance on paper, does this look even half as transformative as those? Yeah, like maybe half is transformative, but <laughs> just visually. <laughs> but but in terms of what we're seeing, what they showed off, they didn't really show us anything to get us mm. really excited. So hopefully they're like, GTS is back or something. I don't know. Like, I want to see something yeah. really exciting um, to, to really tickle my tummy on this one. But but it's cute. Oh. I like it. And I like the memes. I, I like I like I the Chibi it. Dawn memes. Awful. So we, we have seen a kind of couple of things that allude to different elements from these games. So we saw yeah. um, a blonde woman who was only available in Pokemon Platinum because she talks to you about the Pokemon Shaman. We saw the clowns in front of buildings, which allude to the Poketch because they introduce you to some of the Poketch elements. So it'd be interesting to see how that bottom screen touch screen functionality is maybe brought in um, because I, that was one of my biggest concerns. I love the Poketch and I love all the mini games and the mm -hmm. stuff you could do with that. We've also kind of 
um, uh, seen the underground already confirmed, and we have seen Oregon Z, yes. who is only from the post game of one of them. So they have already made it very clear in these trailers that like, hey, there's going to be stuff in there. We're kind of sneaking it in there for the Pokemon fans right now until we explicitly say, hey, this is going to have Pokemon Platinum elements because Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire had the Deoxys story element, which obviously brought in stuff, you know, the Rayquaza and Deoxys story, which was this whole, kind of whole new thing that also added a special event. So I think we can expect something kind of very similar yeah, here. Yeah, a Delta Episode-esque go... sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, as long as we do get to go to the the distorted world, because that is one of the best areas of Pokemon. Right. All, I don't see why together. we wouldn't. Like this is probably going to be like that. I I, I don't see why not. That's yeah. not the wouldn't money. What? What do you mean? Because they could sell it to us. They could sell it to us. They could sell it as DLC. <laughs> I can't even dignify that <laughs> with a response. But let's, but let's not. But let's not go there. Let's I'm not even going to dignify and, that with a response. There's And use the information we have right now. I'm just saying that we have all... Look, we're all huge Pokemon fans. And we, we've just been a little bit burned by the Pokemon companies. Yeah greediness and malpractices in certain ways. So I think everyone is rightfully hesitant. But the information we have looks great. John, what do you think? Did you play Diamond and Pearl back in the day? Are you excited for this? Uh, yeah, I am. I have played only the starting segments of it because at the, at the time I would take a DS uh, from a friend to play it. I didn't have one. But uh, I'm excited and everything that they have shown so far uh, is great to me because, uh, as you have said, there's the problem of what the hell they are doing with this remake and every option seems to make some people angry. Because yeah. if it was Sword and Shield engine, people would complain. Yeah. If, it, if it was a let's go game, people would also complain. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this option is a kind of middle ground between what you had and what you have now. So I'm excited to see more and I uh, probably will get the game at the end of the year. Seems great. I want to see more. Yeah. Yeah. I think the the setting of Sinnoh is going to make it a really nice Christmas game. Um, it's like Sinnoh was quite seasonal, so you do have like a kind of winter right. section as well. And it's dynamic a lot of kind of... too, like I said. It's like yeah. it's got like so many different, not just the seasons, but like it's got the mountain, it's got like enough oh, water. God. It doesn't have too much yeah. water. <laughs> it, you know, it's good. It's a good yeah. ratio. Yeah, and it's a good the world. Best. The best thing, and we always talk about this when talking about Pokemon and Game Freak, is that it isn't made by Game Freak. On the sense that yeah. now Game Freak has time for the next Pokemon. It's not, they don't need to work on one Pokemon game. Oh, ever and they need time for the next Pokemon one. They, see. they need time for that, and we probably will get something new mm -hmm. thanks to that. Oh, yes. Exactly. So, moving on, but staying in Sinnoh, the next announcement was Pokemon Legends Arceus, right. which I don't think anybody in their right mind was expecting to happen. And definitely after the kind of mixed views of Diamond and Pearl, we were like, oh, so this is the next Pokemon game. This makes <laughs> sense. Right. So what we have in Pokemon Legends Arceus is a fully 3D semi-open world action RPG Pokemon game set in Feudal Sinnoh. So hundreds of years before things like Pokemon battles and stuff are very common. So this is before gym leaders, but it is kind of at the beginning of things like Pokeballs and maybe understanding how to catch Pokemon. It's set in like this large uh, leafy open area that everyone's going breath of the wild breath of the wild they didn't <laughs> invent fields they didn't invent fields but it looks great and we actually yeah. see the pokemon out in the open world and we see um our trainer interacting with them now this looks like everything that people have been asking yeah. for in that it's something different it's not mm -hmm. the same eight gyms it's a different time period it's going to have some story that's probably going to explain a lot of the backstory of the pokemon mm -hmm. Well, people think Pokemon doesn't have lore or a story. I'm not paying attention. There's a lot of weird <laughs> and really interesting lore in Pokemon that yeah. goes into like yeah. multiple dimensions. We are, we, are bound, yeah. we are bound to see people marrying Pokemon on 
Legends of Arceus. Oh my so god, that, no! That will see something interesting. <laughs> or at least we'll see a quest that involves someone saying that they are going to marry a Pokemon or something like that. Oh my that. god. It will, it will if no one knows, it, there's, that's alluded to in uh, in Diamond and Pearl. Like People in Pokemon used to... It was like a translation issue, I think. Uh, people in Pokemon used to... Um, live together or something and they implied yes. that they were dating and it was like oh yeah yeah oh <laughs> they used to live together like bert and ernie we all know what that means so... I, I i'm misquoting it but it was it implied that there was cohabitation yeah. happening and this well, was like, i don't oh, want to okay. talk about that but no the but games but they no i yeah um something i mean i would have liked to see ancient galar but um because i think that the ancient like lore of of the Galar region is really cool. Like, see, I don't hate everything yeah. about Sword and Shield. I love the storyline. I really would have liked to explore that. Um, but Sinnoh has probably the second most interesting, like, ancient lore to me. Um, and it also has, I think, the most cool regional, like, the, the Pokemon of Sinnoh, the mm. decks of Sinnoh, is probably my favorite so overall... Good generation in terms of design absolute bangers conceptual like these pokemon just look so cool so if it's also, ancient sino best three starters in any generation amazing starters. I, will, I will fight anyone look the first gen absolutely <laughs> incredible but in terms of all three of them being good all gen three of them are great winner. uh gen 4 absolutely has a lot incredible. going for it and um, so I think it's funny when you say that and then they give us three like random starters from across the universe. <laughs> but yeah. but yeah, that... that that hurt me. I was like, Piplop, here we go. <laughs> yeah, interesting uh choice there. But that could mean that we'll see I mean, because they're so rare in the modern day, it could mean I'm just speculating here that we'll see things like Piplop out in the wild in their well, we in their natural in the habitat. We saw, right. We so, saw all three of the starters out in the wild in, in the, the trailer, wild. And I so think yeah there's going to be a different dynamic like ancient pokemon aren't ancient anymore legendary mm -hmm. pokemon might be more like out there and then apparently like the name suggests arceus is going to be a big part of this although we're gonna fight god yeah I can't wait. <laughs> yeah you know we're going goku here so um it's JRPG all the way we've yet to know much about the story and to me visually it's i can see how people might say it looks Ugh, it looks bad this game oh, isn't coming out for a while. <laughs> it looks really rough, I, but... I don't think they should have announced it yet. I think they should have announced it in six months' time whenever right. they announced the Switch Pro. They're just giving us, like, a little t like taste of what they're working on. Like, this is still being worked on actively. Yeah. This is not a finished product that they're showing us, no. like, in any way. At all. <laughs> so yeah. I think people are also... Diamond and Pearl, they just haven't given us enough info yet. But with our brilliant diamond and shining pearl, but with um, with Arceus Legends, we're just seeing an incomplete project. So like, yeah. breathe, guys. Not you guys, but Hi. breathe, fans. No, no, no. Give them time. I'm one hundred percent with you. I think the potential here is absolutely incredible. There was about five or ten minutes before the direct, there was a leak, which also leaked some um, pictures, which allude to ways to go around um, the environment. So it was like rideable pokemon being oh, able to yeah. climb so i think this is going to be taking a lot of leaves from breath of the world which every game should because it's the best game ever Why made not? if you're making if you're making an open world game and you don't look at breath of the wild more for you my friend yeah so i think this has got so much potential and you're 100 percent right this is a year out we don't know what the game's going to look like you know things like the frame rate are obviously going to change there's yes. things like in develop in development sometimes they literally haven't animated all of those frames all of the in-betweens they could literally just be, be placeholders to get those things out in the wild yeah. at the moment so a lot of the elements and even trees and stuff that you see can be placeholders yeah you never know but i think but I think visually it already looks leagues above Sword and Shield in terms of density of the actual environment, in terms of the varied environment. So it's not a high bar. Saw kind of... No, it's not, but it's a welcome improvement. Yeah. We actually <laughs> saw kind of foliage, we saw different levels. It was things that we saw in the Crown Tundra DLC, um, thankfully, but it, they've really spread that along. And I'm really happy. I said when I reviewed the Crown Tundra DLC, I can just feel that they're learning what to do here and they want to spread it further. So I know the next game is going to be more open. And here we can, can really directly help. see that they've just pushed that even further. And I'm so happy that Game Freaker, 
you know, they don't have to listen to Pokemon fans for everything. They can't make a game that has Gigantamax and Z moves every single Pokemon and like Mega Evolutions. They can't do it. Right. But I think sometimes, you know, when people just say like, we just want an open world to explore. I don't care if this has just got the Sinnoh decks and those starters. I'd be happy with that as a game. Um and obviously the Pokemon missing from Sword and Shield at the moment is quite heavily a lot of the fourth gen. I think that always kind of gave us a hint that there was this down the line. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm super happy. I'm excited for this. This is 2022. It's miles away. And the last year is when the visuals and those things are touched right. up in the built world. Right. So I, I think it's going to be good. I think we don't know enough. I think Pokemon fans would moan if you gave them a real life Pikachu because you didn't give them a Thunderstone as well. So it's <laughs> they're just never gonna win. Yeah, they're never gonna win. And yeah. here it goes they were both like, ways. You're right. Exactly. Here they were like, wait, you want a faithful remake and you want something new? All right, have both. And they've done the smartest thing they could do. Um, so much as I've got my reservations, and obviously the Pokemon company is yet to win back our trust. Um, I'm excited. I'm probably gonna buy both, and I think they look great. Yep. But. Let's move on. You're definitely going to buy both. Don't say. lie to us. Probably. Yeah. You're definitely going to buy both. I, I'm 100% going to buy both. <laughs> so I think one of the things that um, what everyone was talking about with Pokemon Legends Arceus was this would look really good on the Switch Pro. Mm. And that just might well be happening. Enter That's right. Bloomberg. It's Switch Pro Watch. So <laughs> I'm going to level with you. We kind of, like, me and myself... I quite heavily went on the record and said I still think it's spring next year. Um, I, there was a couple of games that I thought were coming early this year. And as far as I have heard, um, Japan went into a state of emergency in the last um, few months, at the start of the year especially. And the numbers were kind of leaning that way towards the end of last year as mm -hmm. well. They weren't in the position they wanted to be in. Yeah. So from the information that I have gleaned, um, I think late last year, Nintendo... Um, decided to move a lot of their eggs later on in the year and pace a lot of things out. I think they looked at the strength of stuff like Monster Hunter, and then they were like, maybe if we have Snap and then this. So instead of these huge months, we've kind of got things passed out quite sensibly. And I think a lot of the spring stuff has been moved to the second half of this year. Um, so some of the games that I said I'm still confident are coming, so um, WarioWare, Donkey Kong, 2D Metroid, mm -hmm. I think those are games for the second half of this year now. Mm -hmm. I wish i you know i don't like going back on my word and i wouldn't say these things if i wasn't confident. it's not your word it's um, your prediction no no exactly but it's it's still things that i've heard and i wouldn't say if i wasn't confident i'm not just going to spout stuff that i pull out of my ass um so i think that's good, still going to happen and i think the second half of this year maybe could coincide with the latest bloomberg report and this isn't some weird 30 person Spanish um, language like uh, website anymore. This isn't like, this you know, is tiny Bloomberg. websites. Bloomberg. Bloomberg, yeah. who do not like to be caught saying anything untrue. No. Now yeah, saying there's that. A, in... There's a huge difference between the tons of tons of rumors that we have been hearing about the so called Switch Pro for mm -hmm. years now and this Bloomberg report mm -hmm. because yeah. they have uh, their uh, information, their source that are pointing towards uh, the productions of certain right. things that are being used for the Switch Pro right. or the new Switch, you said whatever Nathan... the name is. So we have actual yeah. uh, concrete info about that now. It's not a exactly. mistake. Like, like you said this in a previous podcast, none of this any leaks about this are not a mistake. This is Nintendo giving us a drip feed now and saying, oops, oh no, Bloomberg <laughs> learned about our new split. Oops, yeah. I dropped this information in Bloomberg's lap. That's 100%. Nice. Nintendo, if they wanted to, can choose to send cease and desist. They can choose to send, um, you know, the lawyers round. So I do think they have strategic leaks and information stuff and i do think they want people to kind of look ahead you know especially at the time now when loads of people have kind of thinking about ps5s and um, right. uh, xboxes so right. i think they are definitely putting down the breadcrumbs of like right. we can't show it right now we wanted to but right. there is a switch pro <laughs> they were so waiting we... too until after christmas so they wanted us yeah. to buy our yeah, christmas so. gifts and then they're like now save your money for this 
so what we're hearing this time is we're hearing from a large um, manufacturing kind of side of Japan that Nintendo are sourcing OLED screens, 7-inch, and we're looking at kind of a million to two million units, um, which is not a huge amount for a console launch, but as an iteration, it's kind of um, about right. You know, I, I think if they launched with closer to a million, it would be really tough it'd be really really bad to do that around christmas whereas i think if we get to like the two million or so line then it's a lot better um but an oled screen um the reason they're saying that nintendo have gone for the oled screen is because this is from samsung and apparently samsung um developed these oled screens the price has come down for the like the still ones the stiff ones because obviously now we have bendable screens and apparently the reason nintendo is now looking at this is because samsung have just got so many they're like Please come and take our screens. We have made <laughs> we have made millions of OLED screens. Maybe this was all for Vitas that never got made, and <laughs> now they're just like, please, please. So it's yeah. good for them. They they can now produce these screens that they already had the equipment to produce for a decent price that they're mm -hmm. happy with. And Nintendo has got it cheap enough because they won't do it if it's not cheap because they make toys. Whether we want them to make the Xbox Series X two or not, Nintendo make toys, so they found a price point that they're happy with. Um, which makes a lot of sense and aligns up with everything we've been hearing. And obviously, seven inches is a little bit bigger than the six or so inch we have now on the Switch. Yeah. And I think, I think what it would do is just get rid of the bezel. And you, John, yeah. you made kind of a mock-up as well of because the Joy Cons are so ubiquitous now with things like Labo, with Ring Fit. Nintendo would be disenfranchising millions of people if they change the form factor of the switch mm -hmm. and specifically the, the joy cons or the rail even things like the the nes controllers that slide onto the switch you know if you change any of this all of that kind of disappears so it would be really difficult so i think what we're going to see is just the body of the switch itself stick exactly the same and the innards upgraded and the screen an oled will be a lot brighter and seven inches pretty much makes it bezel-less um i mean i don't want to spend too long because this is going to happen at some <laughs> sorry at some point um but it's interesting that finally we're kind of getting concrete ideas yeah. of uh, of what it's going to look like how are you guys feeling now do you think it's going to be this year are you excited i think it's definitely going to be this year 100 percent. i mean i don't know that i just i have a feeling in my gut that they wouldn't mm -hmm. wait a whole nother year to release this um yeah. and i if I had more money, I would get it. Like, it's not going to be <laughs> worth it for me to get it unless there's things I really want to play that I can't play unless I have that. Um, or unless there's an Animal Crossing New Horizons level special edition that's, like, so cool. I need it, like, or else I'll, uh, now or else I'll never be able to buy it again unless it's marked up, like, 500%. So, mm. you know, and they're probably going to do that. So, oh, no, wallet, get ready. Oh. <laughs> there'll be a there'll be a Zelda one. I will. Oh, I will, stop! Uh, You're gonna make me cry. My sweet uh, hat uh, on the fact that it will probably come out with maybe Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess bundle, or maybe Oracle of Seasons, stop. Oracle of Ages, <laughs> and because my wallet I, can't handle I, this. Because I think Nintendo, for all intents and purposes, wanted and wished upon a star to get this out with Breath of the Wild 2. I think that's exactly what they wanted to happen. But I think maybe now they simply can't do that. And Zelda can be pushed back, but hardware, yeah. you can't keep pushing that back. Especially now when we're seeing stuff like... That would have been you know, so was... good for the launch. Ugh, but you gotta throw up your hands at some point. It would have, but we don't live in that world. Um, yeah. And lots of games have suffered and lots of console manufacturers have suffered. And, right. you know, I, I, I think, yeah. And I, I think Nintendo are just kind of looking at it now like, all right, well, what can we put with that? Because, you know, you do look at stuff like Pokemon Arceus Legends and a couple of like, you know, <laughs> Animal Crossing really chugs as well. This, because it's a handheld, I don't think the Switch has ever felt dated, but I think this is that, you know, we're getting to the point now where loads of people are playing at home loads more as well. So maybe yeah. now this is the time where people go and like, well, if I just have a home console, I do kind of wish this was a bit better. Um, so, yeah, I'm intrigued. I think um, if I had to guess what's going to launch with it, I 100%, I bet they don't launch hardware without Zelda. So if it's not Breath of the World 2, it will be Wind Waker HD or whatever. Right, some kind maybe of, yeah. Yeah, and it will be a Zelda edition because they want to sell them. Maybe we get a surprise Odyssey 2. Maybe it's time. That would be a huge thing as well. Yeah. Um, and 
And I think as well, like, um, we're probably going to get some third party stuff. Like, insiders have been saying there's probably at least um, one third party exclusive, which could, you know, could be stuff like Control, which we've already seen brought over, or Hitman, finally given a native version. We could maybe finally see it. We've got a really good history with Bethesda. Maybe this is how they bring Fallout to Switch eventually. Maybe mm, we get Fallout 4. Please, I love Fallout. Because, <laughs> because, um, Doom and Doom Eternal are both made in the Unreal Engine. Is it the Unreal Engine or is it Unity? Um, but it, whichever one it is, it's very scalable, and it, yeah. you know we've seen with with that, and um, it, it just it can really easily be scaled down. God, I should know which one. Um, but Doom and Doom Eternal are both kind of like corridor shooters, so they're not as big. Whereas something mm -hmm. like Fallout Four is just going to take up more room you know, on a cartridge and in terms of like RAM and stuff. So maybe this is finally where we see something like that. And Bethesda like the Switch. They keep bringing stuff to it. Yeah. So I'm sure they've, they've tried all of these things. And maybe this is that time. Um, and obviously as well, there is the rumor of um, 4K as well, <laughs> which yeah. which obviously this is not going to be a 4K machine. The rumor is that NVIDIA's yeah. DLSS software, which we know is a 4K upscaling software that they use in their tablets. Um, is it tablets or is it in... Well, it's a software they use. We know it works. There's loads of videos online of like Breath of the Wild 4K upscaling test and it looks cracking. It looks... Oh man. It looks so good. Breath of the Wild doesn't need like much at all to look incredible in 4K. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah. I can see that. I can see that as either... A, I think people are saying it's maybe going to be an addition to the dock or it's going to be on the chipset. I don't think they'll change yeah. the dock. I don't think they'll add anything to the dock that isn't in the console because they know some people just play handheld. Right. Um, I, I think the Switch itself is going to be the only thing getting a revision. And mm -hmm. maybe we get a cleaner dock, a smaller dock. I, I, I would I love don't a smaller it's dock. Be. It's so unnecessarily big. There's so much plastic there that doesn't need to be there. Yeah. Yeah, we always we always see these mock-ups of like the switch lying down on a dock, similar to the 3DS charging cradle, and I'd like something like that. Yeah. I don't mind it being out if it's not covered, you know. But I mean, mm -hmm. how do you guys feel about 4K? Do you think Nintendo needs it, and or do you think they're putting it there because they want it for future? It's not projects? that they need it. I feel like it's just like going with the times at this point. Like. If you're yeah, gonna totally. stand up next to a PS5 and an Xbox One or whatever, I mean. You gotta do that. Even when it comes to the new generation, uh, what we have what we have seen with pretty much every game is that when it comes to the so-called uh, buzzword, marketing buzzword that is for key, they start to deliver it with the new consoles, but they need to do some uh, adjustments and do compromise for that. So you have like games that ha have three two or three graphic options where you can choose between 4k and 30 uh, fps you change the frame rate for the resolution uh back and forth so it's not something that these so powerful machines can do easily so obviously a handheld a new iteration of the switch won't be able to go uh par to par with these machines and go like oh this is an 4k machine that you will plug on your big tv and it will look crispy but if they have this kind of uh option that can be on the chipset or with the NVIDIA technology, a kind of solution that is smart but does a good enough job or of maybe not necessarily 4k all, all the times but having a resolution that can go back and forth between a more than full hd and what you would expect for a 4k then you would have something that okay this is not uh, on par with the next gen but it is great for what the nintendo switch is yeah for the mm -hmm. handheld machine that you can put in your tv and the yeah. best thing about the Switch Pro would probably be, be the improvements of other games that we already have on the Nintendo Switch, like Hard Rule Warriors Age of Clamp. As much as I love that game, it has a terrible frame rate on certain points. Games like Xenoblade Chronicles have a variable, uh, 
a variable resolution even on handheld mode then it can get really a hit on certain segments so mm -hmm. if these games runs on handheld at 20 uh and 720p stable 30 fps stable maybe some games will go up to 6 fps i don't know and then on the big screen it has full hd stable with 30 30 or or 60 fps it would be great already so it would yeah. be enough at least to me that make 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 me think about actually getting this new switch to play with a bigger screen on handheld and these improvements on all departments all technical departments even if it's not 40 yet yeah i think what we need to think about is who these are going to be sold to and we know these are going to be sold to the hardcore nintendo fans like ourselves who are us who are asking for a bit more power mm -hmm. you know you you know your layman are going to be the sort of people that go and want a switch light and just want it for animal crossing in stardew valley and the switch is a perfect machine for that it's absolutely yes. incredible as a handheld and i think you know we are the ones playing hyrule warriors and looking at pokemon legends and going i want a bit more power my worry here is that people are kind of hooked, uh hooked on this idea of like oh the oled screen and the 4k i need to know that the actual innards of it are going to be doing more because 4k upscaling isn't going to change the frame rate um, yeah. So I and and that's what I want to see. I want to see stuff like Link's Awakening running properly, um, because you know this is four-year-old hardware. This point of the Wii U's life was death. It was already <laughs> it was already dead. Yeah. You know, we people we've, was already asking where's the next. This yeah, so rumor and next <laughs> exactly. We're we, you know we're actually four years into the Nintendo Switch. Last no, this week, just this week gone. Um, happy four years, Nintendo Switch. Yeah. We love you very much. Um, but this, we're really pushing the limits now of how long we can go without an iteration. Because it was a year before the 3DS had the 3DS XL. By now, we would have had the new 3DS. Um, and obviously, is you know, th the question is just like, is this going to be like a 1.5 switch? Is this going to be a switch color in the terms of like, it's going to be the same device? but it is going to be more powerful and it's going to get a couple of games that can only run on this. And that is what I want to know before I agree to spend three, 400 quid on another Switch. I can't keep doing this. They already <laughs> made me buy an Animal Crossing one. But if there's a, if there's a Zelda one, I'm done. I'm yeah, out. Yeah, I know exactly. Don't say this. No, maybe you <laughs> So kind of to round up, we did have a few tiny little bits that I wanted to talk about. Um, so we got the announcement of Crash 4. It's about time coming to Switch. This yes. is great news. That looks amazing. They've changed yeah. the entire art style. They've gone in, they've adjusted the lighting, they've adjusted like a variable fra uh, frame rate and stuff. And instead of just downscaling and crushing it onto Switch, they've just gone, what can the Switch do? Let's make it work like that. Man, that game looks, am that yeah. looks so good. Yeah. Um, so super excited for that. That's the end of March, March not 26th. Is it the same day as Monster Hunter? I'm not sure. Uh, and Balan and Balan Wonderland. Oh no! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Poor We're... Crash. Yeah. Oh Sorry, god. Crash. Poor Monster Hunter. Everyone's gonna be rushing out to get Balan. Yeah. After that, we got we got the announcement of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater One and Two remake coming to Nintendo Switch. The surprise of absolutely no one. Obviously, this makes sense. Now, this is one that I'm a little bit more concerned about in terms of art style because I've got this game on PS4 and it is one of the best looking games on my PS4. It uses HDR, it uses really detailed models and it runs quickly. And this game yeah. has to run quickly. This is a reaction game, this is an action game and it feels good mm -hmm. because it runs like that. Right. Um, I don't we mind them completely changing the art style, making yeah. it a bit more chibi. You know, they did this with the DS games. They did this with Tony Hawk's American Wasteland. We... If it runs on the hardware, I'm happy if they change the art style. We have seen some uh, very short footage of uh, how this game is running on the Nintendo Switch. Mm -hmm. And it is a bit different from the Crash remake. It's more like those kind of parts that take the things and turn down the graphics and yeah the they turn the lighting in. right down but from what they have shown it still seems to run good enough it, it still has a good enough uh art style and everything is still holding up on the Nintendo Switch. but it's good to wait a bit more to see how the actual game or more segments of the game the more uh complex levels will run like 
And yeah. well, it's all uh, Activision going for the double dip on the Nintendo Switch because they <laughs> released these games last year and now for people who has two consoles or go uh, play these games before on PC, now you have that inch to get these games on Switch again. <laughs> I am that exact person. I loved, <laughs> it. I loved it on PS4. I completed it and I will be buying it again on Switch because I want to play it on my Switch and I think that'll be good for multiplayer. Um, but I'm I'm super happy. It's another high profile game. Um, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater One and Two Remake was very nearly my game of the year last year. I cannot underestimate how perfect that is for fans of those games. If you're not a fan of those games, it's not for you. But anybody who had even a passing interest in the huge, huge Tony Hawk games in the in the like in the day, it's weird to think now that they were such a cultural touchstone yeah. in the GameCube days. Yeah. Because now, you know, we, only with this have we seen any kind of recap of that. Um, but they were they were literally console selling games and everybody loved them. Mm -hmm. So, and it, it meant a lot to me growing up. So I'm really happy to see that game come over. Um, and I think Switch players are gonna be treated to a really good port by the looks of it. And um, then literally, was that today or yesterday? We had the Monster Hunter presentation, another digital event, which kind of went over a little bit more details about the upcoming Monster Hunter Rise and Stories 2. Um, I don't think we got too much more info. We got confirmation of um, DLC for Rise. So we got Chameleon, Chameleo, the upcoming monster in April, as well as the announcement of uh, additional content down the line, which is great news. I'm really happy they're going to be adding uh, more content, but they always do this to Monster Hunter. Um, it's just good to see it happen. And um, we kind of got um, the announcement that the initial demo is now re uh, available to download with an update. So now you can actually fight the signature monster Magnamalo if you want. Which is super cool that they're just like, yeah, give it a go. Good luck. <laughs> um, Try your luck. Uh, so now you can you can play that. You can download that again. Um, it's a shame I don't think the progress carries over, but I guess I don't know what you could carry over. Um, it, I, but I, I, you know, anybody who played that original demo now gets a chance to play it again because as well, it was limited to thirty tries, but that's been restarted with this update, yeah. which is good news. I shouldn't be limited anyway, but you know, you know, and um, stories two, we got a definitive Jul was that July release date? I think it's a week before July. Skyward Sword HD. Um, we got three amiibo. We got um, two of the characters. One was a feline, and we got a Rathalos amiibo as well. I should have more notes. I'm doing this all off my memory. Um, <laughs> but I, I obviously we've talked. Um, well, I think we haven't spoken about Monster Hunter Rise enough because the last the other podcast didn't happen or whatever. Um, but it speaks for itself, and we're going to talk about that in the coming weeks when it releases. Um, yep. But stories two. This game looks absolutely amazing. I was looking at that and I was like, oh, <laughs> Pokemon couldn't do this, could it? Like, yeah. <laughs> beautiful spell shaded art style, RPG mm -hmm. mechanics. The story looks engaging. The little baby Rathalos that pops out the egg. Like, Incredible. that game looks so good. I, I, I don't know if this trailer or anything previously has made you consider stories too. How are you guys feeling about it now? I was never into Monster Hunter, so I don't think anything would get me into it at this point. I mean, but, but this is a cute RPG. It I looks mean, basically kind of like a Pokemon game. I'll, it's probably the only one I'll end up trying if I do. You know what I'm saying? Like Monster Hunter is just like too much pressure for me. I'm a low pressure kind of <laughs> gamer. Like I like my Zelda. I like my Pokemon. I don't like to be attacked by giant monsters. Like I don't know. Um, but this one seems That's cool. Fair. I mean, it seems a little more up my alley than the other games. That's all I can really and say. John... Uh, I'm not much into Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter World was actually the first game of the series that I have played, and I enjoyed it. But uh, Monster Hunter, in general, is one of the series that has so much background that it mm -hmm. carries me to try. But uh, going into Stories 2, this is the game that... Uh, it's that uh, The Simpsons GIF meme where there's the ship and then there's a beautiful, most beautiful ship on front, and then you push the ship to the side to see the most beautiful ship, because the Monster Hunter Rise is the one that I'm push, pushing aside to see stories too, because that game feels like something made for me. It To me, that I haven't played the first one, it sounds like a kind of, uh, it, gives, it gives me some vibes of the world of Final Fantasy, 
which is a kind of chibi approach to the series, a more uh, family friend, if you could say so, but with some vibes from Dragon Quest in the mm -hmm. sense of that it has a kind of epic narrative with lovable characters and those cats, cat character that you love from the trailer and then there's the partner and the party that you will form and then get a uh, baby rathalos to yeah. kick the like of all moments <laughs> i i've played a bit of stories one um i haven't completed it it's kind of somewhere between almost pokemon and like something like nino kuni um and it's a really beautiful game so i'm super excited i was already on board but i now my hype levels are almost at like rise levels um, so I think they're doing a really good job of selling it as well. I hope yeah. I hope they do enough to let people know you don't have to know about Monster Hunter to get into this. Because I think yeah. this is going to suffer the kind of like um, the Persona thing where people are going to be like, hang on, what, what's Shin Megami Tensei? What's Persona? I don't want people <laughs> to think they need to know all of these things to get in. I, I think people need to yeah. know like, no, 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 you can just enjoy this. Um, so that's now July super excited i think it's gonna be a great release um and then we actually got in the last couple of weeks bravely default 2 which has been released um i just put this here because i don't know who else has been playing it i picked it up on our review from Chelly, who gave it a 4.5 and i just read that and i was like this is a me game i love my rpgs <laughs> yeah um yeah have you guys played the demo or have you picked this up yet no but i know it's a me game too and i can't wait to play yeah. it everything i see i know it's gonna be me but and and i Many people have asked me because I keep saying I want to play it. People are like, well, did you get it? I'm like, not yet. I just I need time, but I will. I'm excited. Uh, I've played it's... the demo, and ever since then, I've been thinking about this game. But I didn't get it yet because I've been in a kind of mood where I've been playing huge JRPGs one after the other, and then I I need some time, play some other things, then I will jump into the Brady Default Two for sure. Mm. Yeah, I'm about um I'm trying to think, I'm probably about ten hours in. I'm like just starting chapter two or so. Um and this is like a JRPG, a hundred percent. This is like proper turn based and everything. But it's got a lot of different things in there. It's got kind of like the brave and default system. Um you see your enemies in the overworld and the art style is incredible. I think anybody kind of on the fence about it. Um, if you like RPGs, this is very much a classic one, but a very good rendition of that. I think um, anybody who enjoyed something like Dragon Quest XI is going to have a good time here. This isn't a Xenoblade. This isn't some wild god-killing adventure with huge <laughs> action elements. This is a quaint and cute RPG, but what it does, it does really well. Like um, the, the creatures and stuff look amazing. All the baddies look like slimy and gross, and like the lighting <laughs> effects are great. And then as well, it's got this incredible feature where um, you can go exploring on a boat when you put your switch to sleep. So um, And it lasts up to 12 hours. So when you finish, and you're like, all right, I'm going to go to bed. And then when you pick it up, it's like, cool, your character's been exploring for 12 hours. And you get loads of loot. You get loads of stuff. Like, It's That's just such great. a good cycle for the game. I'm, I'm really, yeah. really loving it. Um, so kind of, yeah, that's it. That's it, guys. That's the news right now. That's a whole <laughs> load of Nintendo news, considering we were kind of it's really desperate for three some... months of Nintendo news. Oh, good. We're not we're not waiting that long again. I don't care if next week we're <laughs> talking about like which Pokemon are in Pokemon Snap. I'll 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 have a quiet week. <laughs> I'm uh, down. But I want to I want to finish up by asking you guys what you have been playing uh, recently in terms of Nintendo. And have you been playing anything? Uh, well, I have been playing Fire Emblem Three Houses, which is not a new game uh, at all. However, oh. I finally got to it, uh, and I love <laughs> it. And Dimitri is my husband, that is all. He's not my husband yet, but he he will be. Nice. <laughs> what what about great. you, John? Uh, I, I have just started the one game that uh, it appeared on a Nintendo presentation. Uh, I'm done. I think it's the last in the world presentation, which is Gnosia. And it's kind of a visual novel with RPG elements that is basically, uh, you need to talk about this game like this nowadays. It's basically a single player Among Us mm. because you are in a spaceship 
uh, with other characters, and then there is one or more characters that is infected with a kind of alien being, and the infected character will kill all the others each time you go to sleep. Then you need to talk with all characters and then go uh, kind of detective mode to understand if, oh, who is lying and who is the... Mm enemy and who is going to kill everybody and put that person on a kind of cold sleep uh, each time. Uh, so far, I'm only on the first hours of the game, but uh, I'm extremely excited to see more. Uh, up to now, I have seen uh, some bits of the characters, how each one has its own uh, perks and they like each other and their relationships between them that you need to learn about from each cycle that you do in the game. And but I would do a review for Switch player. I'm excited to hear more. But uh, even before getting the game, I was excited. It was a Vita game that was only released in Japan in 2019. And when it was first released, the IGN from Japan gave it a 10 out of 10. So it mm -hmm. was on one of the, those games that seems to have lots to, to do, but it was kind of stuck in a limbo from the release in a bad, bad moment. And now it can be played by more people. And I'm excited to hear more and to write the review, which you will be, read, be able to read on Switch Player soon. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. Like I, well, I'm not playing it, but I'm excited by that game. Um, like I really love um, Virtue's Last Reward and yeah. Nine Nine Nine, um, these kind of dark and intense kind of graphic novel detective -y games. And this looks right like that. But you're right with that Among Us element of like <laughs> one of you is the killer and you have to figure that out. Yeah. So I really look forward to reading your review because I'm not that I need any excuse to buy another game <laughs> but i but i hope it's good because uh, i'm yeah. really intrigued by this um and i i already spoke about um bravely default which i've been playing and other than that even playing one game that i can't speak about but i'll be able to talk about in a couple of weeks but i have been playing a lot of it <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm, I sure, I'm sure you'll hear my thoughts on that eventually other than that it's kind of it, really, guys. This has been a, a really good little recap of yeah. all the Nintendo news we've been through. The week um, in Nintendo oh, Land, you might say. Pardon? The week in Nintendo Land, you might say. It's been a long week. And the it's long... been a long week. <laughs> um, so thank you very much for joining me, guys. Um, obviously, anybody who enjoys our words and who doesn't know, we actually all work for Switch Player Magazine. You can find our physical magazine, which releases every single month on our Patreon. That is just search for Switch Player. And uh, you can also become a Patreon to support us and get that sent to you every single month. Obviously, as well, please feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We are going to be doing these very regularly again now. And uh, thanks for joining me, guys. Where can people find you if they want to find you, uh, Anna? I'm at MayTwitch on uh, Twitter, and if you want to watch the game streams, it's May7733. Nice. Where can people find you, John? Uh, I'm always at Twitter every day at uh, Joe Carneiro. You can find me talking about random things all day. And on Switch Player Magazine, please support if, as you, if you can. 100%. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All mo well, I say all. A lot of our wonderful art is all down to John, and also he literally puts it together. We wouldn't function without him. There's, there, well, I think we'd all just pack up and go home. Uh, and if you wanted to find me, you can find me uh, on Twitter at Nate and Destroy. Um, so thank you very much for joining us, guys. And hopefully, it won't be so long till we see you again. Cheers. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.